I am just about. Very uh, good. We are recording. Let me just get yes. this a little bit more accurate. And let me see. Um, how's that looking? Looks good to me. Okie dokie. So um, thank you very much for having me. I'm really excited to um, see everybody again. It's been a long time. And One Million Cups is, is, is so close to my heart. I love this group. Um, everything that you are doing, um, I, I think it's wonderful for our community. And um, so I'm really happy to to be here and I appreciate the opportunity to talk about our next um, project with binary formation. So you all, most of you all know who, who we are, but um, just real quickly, it's Kevin, Kevin, my husband and myself, and we have uh, been bringing to market apps, our own consumer apps, things that uh, help us, ideas that we, um, uh, we create the apps from things in our own home or lives that we might have a challenge with. Um, and then we take that idea and bring it to market uh, via a, a mobile or desktop app. And our main focus since uh, 2005 um, is home inventory, which is a Mac app uh, that helps you document your home for insurance purposes. And that's really what got us started into the app business. We both have a long career in enterprise software. Um, and we decided um, when our son was two back in 2010 that we had enough enterprise software. <laughs> and um, we were gonna go, um, go all out or go home. And um, we left our cushy jobs. Um, they were cushy, but they were very, very, very um, consuming. And we wanted to work for ourselves. So we jumped ship and started um, really focusing on binary formation, formations with home inventory. And since then, um, we brought all these apps you see on the screen to uh, the market and the ones that are starred, those are the ones that are currently still in the store. So um, our, we have a, a, a number of um, priorities that we, and values that we have um, determined for our company and what we want to, how we want to see the company grow and, and um, values that we stick with when we're bringing different apps to market. And um, the ones start, as I said, are the ones that remain um, available on the app stores. Uh, the rest, for some reason, maybe they weren't a great success or maybe they were taking too much time out of uh, the time that we do have, which is limited because there's only two of us. Um, so our biggest focus uh, until this past year has been home inventory. So if there's an app that's not bringing in the revenue that we need to, to cover it, then we kill it fast and make sure we don't take away from home inventory, which is our bread and butter up until this past year. Some of our, uh, our base values, um, I would say data privacy and integrity is absolutely number one. Um, we feel strongly, we are strongly aligned with Apple when it comes to privacy and data privacy. We don't want access to anybody's data. Um, we believe the customer, that's their data. They have a right to do it with it as they choose. Uh, so all of our apps are based on that. Um, all of the design and, and development. Is based on that. We always want to make affordable apps. We don't want to outprice um, our apps. We don't want to go to, you know, raise a price and go hit a very small market um, for that can pay that higher price. We'd rather be able to um, help your average person, your average consumer. We have bootstrapped our business from day one, and we continue to do so. There have been really good years. There have been not so good years um, since then. Uh, so um, we have not taken on um, any VC, any capital. 
it's something that I would not say is 100% out of our um, options, uh, but it's something that we strive to, to do. We, we both have worked in the um, startup uh, sector for years and years and years, and we're not against that. It's just not a fit for what we want to do um, with, with our company. Now, that doesn't mean that we don't want to grow or we don't want to hire or we don't want to um, hire, you know, bring in people when we can. And we certainly try to do that. We, if we can, um, we like to contract out for things that we're not good at. And there are, you know, things like icon design, um, some of the more um, creative areas. We're not that <laughs> great at. So we absolutely, when we can um, contract out for those types of services, we have a UI uh, or an artist here in Richmond that we use um, that does a wonderful job. So um, customer service is also really important. We really believe that's part of the product, that whole user experience. It's, you, you don't put an app out there and then and never um, hear from your customers again. Uh, it, it, customer service is a way for us to really get to know our market. And we spend um, a lot of time on that infrastructure to automate it, but also to create a personal touch. We respond to every single email that comes in um, personally. Um, it, limited infrastructure, that's really important to us in a number of uh, areas. One is we, uh, we don't have, we are not masters of every area of technology. So if there's another um, company that's better at doing something, we'd rather have them do it. For instance, Apple, <laughs> they're really good at security. They're really good at storage with iCloud. Um, so we let them do the heavy work in those areas um, that they do a better job than we could ever do. And then it keeps us able to do what we want to do, concentrate on the actual features and functionality of our apps and supporting our users. So we don't, we don't have a server farm. We don't have a back end to any of our apps. It's all native. And that keeps our costs down and it keeps us focused. And it lets the experts do what they do. And um, one of the biggest joys of our company that Kevin and I have is we release our apps when they're ready. <laughs> We spent years in enterprise software where <laughs> there are hard deadlines and whether or not you were um, really uh, approving of the quality and, and the state of, of the software, there was not a lot of room to, fit, to pivot or um, change deadlines. I think if you've been in that environment, you understand totally about that. So one of our biggest joys is to be able to release when ready and pivot when needed. So we can pivot very quickly if we see we made the wrong decision or, um, yeah, I think you get it. So let's move on. So our challenges were with home inventory, and these have been going on for a few years now because the market has changed dramatically since we first started. Um, our revenue model um, was not supporting us um, in our business, or as a, you know, even as enough revenue to support our family for the last um, year or so, because our revenue model was one uh, one-time purchase, and so you can imagine if. The first release of home inventory was in 2005. We were still supporting people um, years and years later uh, from that one-time purchase. And it's just not feasible. It's not a feasible model, I, I don't think, for, for, for software in general. But that's a whole other <laughs> discussion. Um, because of the, the platforms changed so much, the, the operating systems changed so much. So um, that revenue was just not going to cut it. And unfortunately, Apple does not support an upgrade revenue model, so we can't charge for upgrades. So that was a real, um, you know, our hands were kind of tied with home in inventory. Home inventory was more of an occasional use. We used it every day, but we kind of um, 
we figured out how to use it for all kinds of different things that it wasn't designed for. And a lot of our customers did too, but the, the most part it was, it was, you know, once a week or maybe a few times a month um, use. And that doesn't um, bode well for um, a recurring revenue model, right? It's gotta be sticky. We found there was a lot of, um, copycats through the years. We did uh, file for trademark back in the day when we started this um, full time in 2010. And we were pretty sure it was going to be denied and it was, but nobody else had filed for home inventory at that point. So it was more of a strategic move for us um, for future cases. Uh, but but there's still been a lot of copycats there. You can just search the stores and um, so we kind of got lost in the market at times and we really wanted to um to remove that that challenge we had a lot of technical debt our first release was in 2005 uh, we had a rewrite in 2012 but the 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 structure and the and the feature set was pretty similar and so it's based on old technology. The last few years, the technology has just gone so fast and so quickly into machine learning, into all these other different things, AI, that our product was just not designed for because it didn't exist at that time. And we were Mac only. So those were our challenges with, with home inventory. And um this is where we went with under my roof under my roof really started out as a rewrite of home inventory to bring it to uh, iphone and ipad but while we were going through the whole design and uh, you know fleshing out the the features we realized we wanted something totally different we were using it on a daily basis for things it wasn't designed for so we decided at that point Home inventory is yesterday. We are going with a brand new app that is um, based on what we want to see, how we want to use it. It's a total home management app. Um, we went all in. We went subscription. It is a su subscription yearly or monthly at a very reasonable rate, which is um, one of our goals. It's affordable. It's $24, $25 a year or $4 a month. And, and this really is our foundation for future growth and being able to support and grow our, our business and our customer base. Um, so we'll focus on quality product and quality content as far as the things that go around it, uh, customer service, help tutorials, videos, um, newsletters, these kinds of things that make it subscription worthy and still be able to, to support all the changes in the operating systems and the new hardware, which is continuous. We are continually testing and, and improving all of our apps and subscription gives us that, um, that foundation to con continue to do that versus the one-time uh, paid option that home inventory had. This app is a daily use. We did that intentionally, not only because we use it daily, but because the, there are so many people that can benefit from it in a daily, on a daily basis, um, from maintenance to, you know, checking maintenance to, to uh, storing important documents. We'll get into that in a little bit. Um, what makes it daily. Uh, trademark, we absolutely filed for trademark and you can see the, uh, the R, <laughs> we are registered. So nobody can, um, you know, use this. Um, we'll be, I know, <laughs> we'll be able to um, put our, you know, stick our flag in the ground under my roof is the home management app. Um, and we are using the latest technology. Under My Roof is, is built for the latest operating systems. We are not supporting anything be, behind one um, version. It is based with all the newest technology. We have implemented machine learning 
in it. We have live text recognition. Uh, we, we are embracing and, and continue to embrace the new technology that comes out. And it's just wonderful to be able to do that. We have um, built it upon Apple's iCloud uh, uh, storage. We have our own sync engine that we built. And we use iCloud for storage. So that brings in our other uh, values and goals as a business. Data is private. We have no access to it. Uh, if the customer wants to share it, they can, but that's they're sharing their private iCloud account, um, their storage container. Apple handles all the security. They handle the infrastructure. They handle everything. We handle the application. The, the syncing of the data, the data structure, everything that has to do with the app. So that this is under my roof, follows our, our goals and our, and our values as a company. And um, just really quickly, because I know it's not about the product, it's really about our business model. Uh, these are some of the things that make it a daily use app. It is based on home inventory. It's based on a home inventory. So you need all of that information. Um, and then it takes that information and provides a interface for estate planning, for moving. We have a moving box in interface. So um, this is gonna be really, really helpful. Say for instance, for military moving, it's moving season soon. <laughs> and, Storing all your important documents, you need to get a receipt for something, see if a warranty is, is still valid. Um, we actually have claims tracking in there. We are going through, this is another uh, reason last year has been a little bit long. We had water damage. Our first floor is all torn up. It's been that way since, since November before Thanksgiving. <laughs> our kitchen is a, um, is a, like a garage tub. And um, so we have insurance claims tracking. It's been a godsend for going through this process. Um, so just, it's built on a foundation of, uh, of responsiveness, privacy, sharing, um, lots of built-in help, um, easy use, uh, easy workflow using latest technologies. So uh, kind of it, where we went with the product and the whole um, marketplace, the homeowner owners market. I mean, the the home market is just crazy, and this is an app that 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 everybody sh should have and can help. Um, so finally, our challenges. I know it's it's getting on, so um, we still have a, a small challenge with subscriptions. Um, the older market, um, which home inventory really um, ended up targeting, is very adverse to subscriptions. The younger market seems to, to not be so much. Um, and the Mac market is a little hesitant on subscriptions versus iOS, which is more um, attuned to subscription pricing. We did not get the pushback that we thought we would. We thought we would get a huge amount of pushback that did not um, come to fruition. Thank goodness we have a little bit of um, pushback but, but from our existing customers, but not much. Um, our messaging has been very difficult because it does do so much. Um, it's very hard to say in a few words <laughs> what the app does. So we struggled with that. So any feedback on that is very much welcome. Um, we have different targets, uh, different markets that we're targeting from moving to uh, getting organized um, to the younger crowd, first time homeowners. So messaging is a struggle. Marketing, now marketing has always, <laughs> you've heard us present before, I think, marketing has always been a struggle. We're very good at building quality apps. We're not so good at, uh, at the marketing side of it. Our struggle right now is to get outside of the app store. We need mainstream media attention. We need earned media and mainstream. We need influencers. We need social media pre presence. We have our own channels. Uh, we don't do a great job at it because of the time that it takes and our hesitation to 
to take time from other areas to really focus on it. I have been um, making it a priority lately. Um, we're going to, fo we're focusing on Instagram and Facebook with a little bit of Twitter and, but Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. Those are our three um, channels that we really want to hit heavy. We've been creating videos um, for YouTube. Our YouTube presence has been growing. We want it to grow much <laughs> larger, but we have to get better at, at and faster at, at putting uh, content out. Um, so we marketing, we want to get outside of just the app store um, you know, finding us in the app store. We need influencers. We need mainstream media coverage. And of course, resources is always an issue um, because there's only two of us. Kevin and I have to wear every single hat in a company. We managed to get by. Um, I would love to grow the business where we can get uh, a full-time marketing, uh, social media, and a junior developer. Um, and yeah. Uh, that was really kind of, I feel like I just like spewed a whole bunch of information out there, but that that's really uh, where we're at. Um, it, it, we love feedback. If you want to, you know, take a picture of this, uh, reach out anytime. Um, and I guess it's time for uh, discussion, Q&A, and any feedback you have. We are always open to help. We are always open to help um, the entrepreneur market and in Richmond as well. <laughs> Learn from our mistakes. We made a lot of them, um, but we continue. And I'm really excited about Under My Roof and the future it has. So great, Diane. That was awesome. Um... You guys really <laughs> have done an awful lot since we, we spoke uh, pre-COVID last time. So it's yeah, congratulations. <laughs> Lots of really good stuff there. So um, usually we look for raised hands. John Marin um, looks like he gets the uh, gold star for that right oh. now. And then we also look for things to be in the chat uh, window as well. So um, John, do you want to lead off here? Uh, sure. Uh, thank you, Diane. That was, uh, I, I've been looking at the app in the app store uh, yeah. to see the, the features because my first question was kind of, who is this for? And I mean that in the sense of uh, it does do a lot of things and it's very detailed. I, I'm not making fun of this. It's, it's like an OCD's no. person way to manage their house, essentially. And so it's like, oh, can I keep track of everything, anything and everything, the year it was built, how much it's worth when I paid for it. Um, so it starts to keep track of things like depreciation, I'm sure, like it's very detailed. And mm. so my mom would love this. Uh, I, I would <laughs> like something like this. I keep, my girlfriend and I right now, we're looking to buy a house, right? And we're keeping track of this stuff because we're doing a, um, we're gonna be buying a house together, but we're not married yet. So we're keeping track of legal documentation, yes. owns what and that kind of stuff. So. All Perfect. of these things are relevant and important, but not everyone thinks like this and lives like this and likes these things. So like how, I, you talked about the influencers. So there's already people that have a, a medium for people that are interested in these types of things. Yes. Um, but is there a, is that kind of the only person that it's for? You have to kind of be that regimented or is there another audience as well? And um, I think that it does take a person that, that, either wants to be that regimented or is, you know, it does take some, some kind of desire to be better organized. Mm -hmm. um, some sort of desire to, or frustration to um, wasting time, you know, always digging around in the, in the, files or the boxes of papers or the or searching the internet for the receipt that I need to find where did I buy that from you know going to that website uh you know it, it takes that realization somebody realizing that yeah this this is an issue or you know even from a maintenance standpoint uh, missing maintenance is huge it can be really really costly if you miss maintenance for your hvac or 
you know, you don't clean out the gutters and your roof gets, you know, ruined, these types of things. So it, I think that's why, you know, it, it almost does sit better with a more mature audience because a younger right. audience hasn't experienced some of those maintenance right. disasters, you know. Um, but yes, I do believe it takes some sort of um, desire and realization that, that like you have had, um, these are things we're keeping track of you and your girlfriend. Um, it might be, you know, how, how are we doing this? And it might be an easier way to do this. Yes. Uh, and uh, John, is, is it okay if I ask an immediate follow-up related to that? Um, it is, but I was uh, a little negligent that there were some questions in the chat window. Oh, no. Where I saw okay. your hand, but, but go ahead, John. I know you'll make it brief. <laughs> uh, <laughs> My my follow up was uh, related to um, is are there is there a, maybe a, a shorter gap to bridge between the typical homeowner versus going to maybe I could immediately see relevance for property management companies to want to use something like this and maybe this already exists just for property management there probably does uh, and uh -huh. so that's that might be kind of the answer right there. Yeah, it does. Um, actually, it's really a, a coincidence. Uh, one of my best friends that I <laughs> have known since kindergarten works for a company that does that. Um, Yardy, I think is what it's called. And um, she's actually in charge of QA. <laughs> I think that's funny. Um, so professionals can use this and um, professionals use home inventory. Um, we're keeping the same uh, direction that we did with home inventory. We do not go after professionals, but they are very welcome to use it. They can use it. They're probably better off using something that's really focused on, on their needs because we're not going to be making changes or, or you know, pivoting the product for professionals. And the, but that does bring up a good point is professional use. Um, professional organizers, those are influencers that, that we um, would definitely like. Um, you know, their customers are getting more tech savvy and this is a really good fit for, for that. Um, and we do have home inventory specialists using, um, professionals using the apps for that. Um, we've been contacted by a number of businesses wanting to use it and wanting us to customize. We don't do that. <laughs> we don't have time to, to, you know, to go off on a, 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 a avenue for a business. Um, but it does work and they can um, use it. Our focus is is really consumer. There's so many so, people that can use this and, and can benefit from it. So, okay, uh, great. So, um, Catherine Coleman has her hand raised and also was in the chat box. So, I'll let her. <laughs> I don't know if it's the same question or if she's got a, a follow up question. So, Catherine, Hi, do you want to ask? Want to ask your question? Hey there. Yeah. So the first idea I had when you were talking about kind of marketing and getting out there and, you know, raising awareness was to maybe look at affiliate partnerships with organizers, general contractors, uh, renovation specialists. Um, also, perhaps there's some companies that do um, corporate moves or temporary moves, the temporary furniture places that have the the users that they would be in touch with that they can then recommend the product for those yes. users when they're at a place in time when they're mm -hmm. actually in the in the process of the move right. Um, right and so some sort of affiliate agreement where mm -hmm. you could there's some benefit to them um or something like that so that was one thought yeah if yeah i think that's a great idea um catherine is it, it it's something that we would absolutely love to do um, because our apps are native to the platforms we don't have a, a back end um, to it where we can actually share revenue everything goes through the app store and unfortunately apple a number of years ago 
removed actual apps from their affiliate program, which I think is an absolute disaster. Um, so they will allow you to provide, I mean, they will provide affiliate um, payouts for books, for music, for TV, every single um, type of content that they sell except for apps. So we're, we're kind of tied, you know, hand tied with that as far as affiliates, but, you know, I'd love to find another way to do, to do something like that, um, that we can do outside of the app store. I haven't found that, but I would love to, you know, to find something like that. Okay. Yeah. And I, I'm not the, the app builder. I have very limited technical expertise. No, in this no, area. it's a great idea. Um, but I know I've seen other apps where it's like you download it from the app's website versus yes. the app store um, and the, you know, affiliate codes and stuff like that, affiliate yes. links. Um, but then the other question I had is what have you guys done? And maybe you covered this. I was a few minutes like jumping into the call. Um, but what have you guys done to sort of streamline the customer onboarding process? Because I think at least from my perspective, and I just moved a year ago. Um, and as I moved, I, I was pre-moving. I was starting to pack up things in boxes and I created my own inventory by oh, wow. putting numbers on my boxes and yep. dumping a list of what was the content into a spreadsheet so that I could access the spreadsheet wherever I was yep. and find the box with the number. But yep. it's a little overwhelming. And so wondering what what kind of user experience there is in sort of getting people up and functioning on the app? Like, how do you put in the information for all the products you have? Can you just take a picture of the item? Can you, uh, wh what information yes. is needed to do that? Yes, a name. That's the least amount of information that is uh, needed uh, to get started is the name of an item. Um, and then, you know, we've incorporated barcode scanning. Uh, so in your instance, you would um, create a box in the interface and then you, you can um, assign items to that box. You can put a home made barcode on the box. You can scan the barcode in the app and see everything that's in that box. Um, and we, we <laughs> Uh, Apple actually has been having one-on-one -on -one, uh, sessions available to developers this past year um, since COVID, actually, which has been fantastic. And we definitely took advantage of those to meet with their, um, excuse me, their app store and, uh, people and their marketing people. And everything, every time we met, um, it came up, uh, we need to do a better job of onboarding um, as far as getting the person from um, installation to actually using the app, which is exactly what you're talking about. So we have done um, work on that. We have a, an update uh, that is in QA right now. So as soon as I get off this call, I'm going into testing mode. And um, we have added uh, some clarity in that and some, some more um, direction on where to start doing the different things that the app can do. So it's really important. Okay. Um, and because it, it does, yeah, there's so much. And, you know, one of the, the marketing ladies, you know, said, I want to do it. I want to use it for this, but I wasn't sure, you know, where to get started. So, right. So, yeah. And that's what I was kind of thinking. And perhaps like I, I thinking, but I was sort of brainstorming because that's how yeah. my brain works. Um, Good. But, um, <laughs> Cause I'm a, I'm a market strategist and I'm business strategist. That's just All where right. I'm at. Um, but thinking about like sort of the, like choose your own adventure books, right? And so having yeah. almost like a guided flow through, like uh -huh. I used an app before and I cannot remember for the life of me the name of it. And I put all of my appliances in there so I could look up and pull up the manual and they had a yeah. library where they would load in the manual. So I didn't have to worry about that. But, um, yep. you there know, you have go. the appliance <laughs> track, have the, and it's like step-by-step -step user flow 
um, where you kind of guide them through the process or you could even use this as like a content marketing type of thing where you design blog posts that are like step-by-step guides. Yeah. Um, step one, do this. Step two, do this. You know, if you want to do this, do this first. Um, to make it really tangible and easy for somebody to get started on what they need or yeah. what their perceived need is. Because it's got so much uh, um, application in so many yes. different ways that people could use it that it might be a little bit overwhelming for somebody initially to look at it and be like, oh my God, I don't even know. You know, yes. like I've got this house I've lived in for 12 years. Where do I start? You know? Yes. Um, yes, exactly. I like it. I like it a lot. That's um, really good feedback. Um, kind of like great. chunking it out. Like, oh, let's do all of your outdoor lawn equipment or yes. just so, uh, think- that where right Oh, sorry, Diane, go ahead. Sorry. I, I was just going to ask Catherine, do you think that's something that can be done outside the app? Um, you mentioned blog posts or, you know, we really want to build the, the tutorial videos, you know, maybe uh, adventure video or, um, you know, I, there, there's, I think there's the multiple formats. And so it depends on your audience. You know, if you're looking at older audiences, they may, may like a PDF that they can print out and follow step yes. by step. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, you know, I, I am also, I'm guilty of absolutely hating to like sort through YouTube videos to find out. Me how to too. <laughs> Me too. But, because but, then I, I can't but, skip ahead. You know, it's like, I'm a skimmer right. scanner and I find the information I need. And then I, I don't, don't worry about the rest of it. So anyways, yeah. I'll, uh, I just wanted to offer advice. My contact information's in the chat if you want to chat later. Um, but I'll let somebody else ask questions or take the floor. Thank you. Thank you, yeah, Catherine. Thanks. Yeah, thanks, Catherine. So um, Cartwright's been uh, patiently waiting to ask a question. So um, take it away. Yeah, well, actually, uh, Catherine, you covered a ton of the things that I was actually going to say. So thank you. Oh. <laughs> um, but I, I do still have a, a couple things I wanted to mention. So um, based off the, the onboarding um, that you actually suggested, Catherine, um, I've used an app recently uh, called Simplify. It's by Quicken. They have a really great onboarding process because that's another complicated way of like, oh, you have to get your budget set up and there's all great. these things you have mm. to put in and it's just the most oh, tedious, good. annoying process, but it's for your own good and there's really no way around it. Um, but they had a great way of like walking through it and having blog posts and videos and just like little icons to say, hey, do this. Um, another thing that I really like about it is um, they have achievements, which is kind of silly, but it, it helps to feel like you're making some sort of yeah. progress. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. I really oh, you like added that. your fifth appliance, uh-huh. something like that. You know, hooray, uh-huh. here's a little star. Um, you're a super user, you know, whatever. Right. Um, uh, something else. We, we was, all need a little affirmation, you know? Yes. Yeah, uh-huh. definitely. Especially with these kind of like big, tedious data projects, mm-hmm. which is kind of how I see it. Um, I wanted to also mention that like in looking at your, like the daily use pyramid, um, I'm a renter and pretty much everything here applies to me too. I mean, the yes. maintenance isn't super my concern, but from everything you've pitched, I would not have... Like I had to go the extra step yes. of thinking, oh, this applies to renters too. It was okay, like okay, all aimed at homeowners. Yeah, um, and it really, yeah, it's it's the same. It's renters, homeowners. <laughs> you know, yeah. it doesn't matter how much stuff you have or how little or or how big your place is or how little or whether you own it or not. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Mm-hmm. So um, it would be great, and I think the app name under my roof is is totally good because it doesn't it doesn't discriminate between what roof. You know, you got a roof, you're covered. Thanks. Um, uh, the other thing I wanted to mention is it looked like maybe there's a little bit of like branding inconsistency. I don't actually have the app in front of me, but like your icon versus your website, your website's very new and like, it's got those like gradients that everybody likes so much right now. Um, Mm -hmm. and then the icon has this skeuomorphic pen on it. It just doesn't, they don't quite feel connected to me. Um, and it also feels a little bit like um, part of your messaging issue of like, well, which group are you trying to apply to the really young with the modern and the gradients or kind of older with the skeuomorphic pen. So that's, that's interesting. Something. Yeah. And good feedback. That's that I would have never, you know, caught that. <laughs> yeah, so I appreciate that. 
Yeah. yeah. It, and honestly, we haven't done much work on the website um, because we've been really focused on the, the messaging in the app store. And so that's one area that we definitely need to, <laughs> to um, take a better look at. Yeah. Great. Thank you. And um, we have, a, um, I think he's a first time caller with a, a question in the chat window, uh, Mr. Dale Fickett. I think. <laughs> Are you a first time caller, uh, Mr. Uh, Fickett? Long, long time listener, first time caller. Yes, exactly. <laughs> um, yes, uh, th Diane, that was really great. And I put in the chat window kudos to you and Kevin, really, for fortitude and identifying the problems and overcoming them because a lot of people just kind of give up and move on. So well done. I mean, it's really encouraging. So that's awesome. Thank you. Um, and I, I love the earlier reference to the kayaking and <laughs> do it even when you're scared, right? Or, or yeah. we could say, especially when you're scared, yeah. right? Um, <clears throat> so I have one question and one comment. So the question um, is about product design and you talk about stickiness as yeah. a part of the subscription revenue model. And uh -huh. I'd, love, I'd love to hear more about how you and Kevin thought through um, stickiness and recurring use as opposed to a one-time application. Okay. Um, I, it, it's really as simple as we were using it for, you know, things that home inventory really wasn't originally designed for. And there's so much that um, needs to be done that doesn't often get done if you're not organized um, that we saw and um, we, we knew we needed to do these things and we were struggling doing things for our house and keeping up with things and it just was the natural progression I think and it, it in these daily things that need to be taken care of makes the app very sticky I think um, whereas if you're just documenting your, your, your home for insurance purposes, for instance, which was the main reason we, we brought home inventory to the market was how much insurance do I need? You know, Kevin bought his first house. How much insurance did he need? He was making modifications to guitars um, that he wanted to put back to original uh, state when he went to sell them. Uh, those were the two reasons that he originally started home inventory. Those are not very sticky. You know, once a year, home inventory. Um, once a year, you meet with your insurance agent, if you do. <laughs> uh, most people are way underinsured. Um, do you have enough? Do you have the information you need in case something happens and you have to file a claim? Well, most people don't think about that. They don't want to think about that. Um, so that, you know, that, that makes it very hard for home inventory to be sticky, but there's all these other things that we do on a daily basis, and that's what makes it sticky, but it's also what we needed for our home. I don't know if that right. answers your question, but that's... Yeah, no, that's, no that, that's helpful. You were looking at your own personal patterns, behavioral patterns, yes. and then you were extrapolating that out to other people and saying, well, if this is what we're experiencing, uh -huh. we imagine that other, now, did you do any customer discovery related to that? Um, we, we did. Um, I wouldn't say it was very formal, but we have a database full of 15 years of customer feedback um, through our support channel. We're very organized and, and is streamlined in our customer service uh, offering. And anytime that somebody opens up a ticket, that is a invitation that we see for communication and feedback. And so we, we continually ask questions and a lot of this stuff has come up um, during those questions and okay. er, gotcha. during those. Gotcha. So I'm just going to end with this quick screen share that thanks Ian for letting me do this. So um, I was, you had me thinking about your marketing channels and I'm sure Catherine and 
John can speak more to this, but you were talking about audience building and <clears throat> this particular image came to mind that I've used in the past. <clears throat> and so this is the um, overall 2020 marketing spend by channel and uh, your product, I don't know if you'd agree with this. I, I think of it as, you know, people are actively searching for something that's simplifying what they're doing. So kind of upper half of the diagram. And then I would imagine it's kind of on the, on the left side where most random people could buy my product, right? It's broadly applicable in the mass market. Yes. So, yes. so I see channels here that can be relevant for you. Amazon ads, discount wow. sites, maybe some SEO, uh, yes. you know, Google, so forth. So just, I'm, I'm, I'm going to send you that diagram okay, um, yeah, that'd by be great. email so you have it. But um, I don't, I don't want to take up more airtime, but I just wanted to highlight those as potential marketing channels. A absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. And I think you you see in that diagram, Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube kind of in the middle, uh, but more towards the left. And I think those are, are good channels for us. And I think that, um, you know, John brought up earlier, you do have to have some sort of desire <laughs> to be you know, to have a little bit of organization. Um, but it is also a, a, I think a, what do you call it? A, when you see it, you go, oh yeah, I didn't know I knew I needed that, but I do need that. Um, I th think it fits into that, home inventory did. And I think this even more so, um, yeah. Yeah. And then there's other things that we can do as well, because we put in this release that we're going to um, get out there in a couple of weeks, um, the ability to give free codes. So um, since it's a subscription, we can now give lifetime subscriptions as as giveaways, you know, so in, so it's not quite an affiliate, but um, as Catherine was uh, mentioning, but it can be used, you know, to give give away to your base, your customer base, um, or your your environment, your circle influence. And, so, and I'll be so, I'll be quiet now. <laughs> yeah, no, I think I think Ian Ian um, as always keeps us on track. So we're we're nearing the the end of the hour, and yeah. I think as most of you know, we try to keep this um, tight. Um, you know, end at 10 so people can go on and do their things. So a couple of quick things. First of all, Dale, uh, and, then, and then I think there's one more question as well from the audience. But um, so you're reminding me, Dale, your chart. So McKinsey's just done some recent work about um, pre-COVID, COVID, and now coming out of COVID. And uh, uh, so McKinsey Consulting is, of course, one of the largest consulting firms in the world. Uh, and so I think the big headline is omni-channel, which basically means... <laughs> looking looking at all it's not it's not the old days where you hey we're going to be network uh, television we're, we're gonna we're gonna dominate radio et cetera, et cetera. so um that's a quick thing but then you really um you you had a sound bite there diane that really um uh made the light bulb go, go off in my head and earlier i had seen estate planning and i was thinking huh yes. estate planning yes. right and then you said and when we, i'm gonna have to read it because i wrote it down most people are way underinsured. Yes, so absolutely. we can talk more offline, but um, I think you can do a lot with that. I think you can you can have people do the heavy lifting in the insurance. You know, I can see somebody talking about that concept, getting a lot of media play. And oh, by the way, you're you're flavored into that PR in terms of mm -hmm. um a solution or a a technique, a tool. Mm -hmm. So I think mm -hmm. there, I think there's, I think there's a lot of ways you can get without having your own um, significant marketing budget. You can you can get a, a lot of play here in in a lot of different ways. So, um, and and I did see one other question uh, from Ashby because again we're going to the end of the hour, and I think Ian maybe wants me to go through his slides too. So Ashby, do you want to yeah. ask your question? Yeah. Um, fantastic. Diane, I, I mentioned I'm a, a version 3.3 owner of home inventory. Oh, wonderful. 2015. Um, oh, wow. and, my, and my question is, is really around, um, it is, uh, I own the license for that, 
but I've yes. never done anything with it. Okay. And I love seeing where you've gone with this and, and how it's branched further, but to, to, you know, if, if there's any way to, to um, teach and show people how to get the barrier, get past the barrier, getting started, um, yeah. you know, and, and kind of those success stories and developing inertia and momentum, uh, the flywheel effect is, you know, could be, you know, very, very helpful. It's, it continues to be on my back burner. We went through a huge project with my parents moving out of a home for three yes. generations and it, we had to kind of create our own. I never thought about your, um, yes. current product as a way to inventory, um, mm -hmm. collections of items that were quite valuable, many of which we sent to auction. Yes. Um, and absolutely and you can share it yeah. yeah thank you no that's great thank, thank you, you. yeah Very good. thank you um ian uh, you, you threw those slides up quickly i don't know if we want to go back to those or people had a chance to see those or did you give them a chance to sometimes you say if you want to see what's going on let ian know so uh, I think you did that already, right, Ian? Uh, yes, uh, I uh, slowly breezed through the slides and I uh, posted my email in the chat in case uh, one awesome. of our attendees would like to copy. Great. Thank you very much, Ian. Um, yeah, so we're coming to the end of the hour. This is, yeah, really super interesting, Diane. And, and I have to tell you, coming into this, it's like, oh, I forgot about this. And oh my gosh, I have so much on my plate today. It's incredible. And But this has been really great. It's been a... Um, a great distraction for me because I've, I've totally focused on what you've been talking about. And uh, uh, now I'm going to have to get back into all these other things <laughs> that are on my plate. So, um, yeah, thank you for doing this. It was great to catch up. Oh, John Marin. John Marin, um, you can have the last word. I'm sorry. I do. I do have another question. And I think uh, uh, Catherine's been touching on a lot of these that, that I've written down. Um, but one of the other things that, that I was wondering is, would this be a selling point? or a threat to insurance companies in general in terms of could could they could, could they become your customer they pay for a large amount of subscriptions up front from you or some kind of bulk deal and they're like we want to use this for all of our customers it helps us sell a higher insurance package right um is, is there an opportunity here to just go through insurance companies so um i could answer that but it'll take us way <laughs> over the time period, in short, they're a tough bunch. Um, yeah. And it could go either way. Okay. All right. Brian, I, have you? I, I think, it, I, sorry, I was just going to say, I think there's a real positive where um, you could even have AI and machine learning um, uh, comparing what the policy is versus what it should be. And, and it could be, um, yeah, again, using AI and machine yeah. learning, it, it, it could and, be it could be automated. And then it's like, oh, my God, we're incredibly underinsured. What do we do? Yeah. Boom. Uh, and, and we do we do have alerts for being underinsured if you use that feature. So, um, you know, immediately. Um, yeah. But yeah, and I, I think I cut Dale off. So sorry. So, Dale. Um, no, no, that's OK, John. I was just going to ask Diane, just out of curiosity, if you've had a local conversation with Markel about this as like an industry entry point. I have not. I welcome any introduction. Yeah, I'm OK, I'm just just making a note. OK, yeah, All right. they have that entrepreneurial group, too. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And Catherine made a great point about APIs, too. I don't know what the opportunities are with anything related to MLS. Um, for additions or renovations or anything like that that may officially be registered somewhere for updates that were made to homes, especially older homes. Over the years, there's all kinds of like re-roofing and, and anything that's done that you might be able to tap into and automatically yeah. pull for an address when someone registers something um, mm -hmm. that, that could kind of jumpstart their onboarding process uh, and mm -hmm. get them started on something. Thank you. Great. Well, Diane, thank you again. This has been awesome. Let's um, let's try to catch up offline and uh, well, we could do it online or offline, but <laughs> after, <laughs> after this, maybe we could meet uh, and have coffee again, but uh, thank you so much for great. doing this. This has been great. Um, thank you, you guys, for having me and yeah. it's so good to catch up with everybody and I, I, I hope to join more often. Yeah, and congratulations. You guys are doing an awesome job. So thanks everyone. Thank you. Thanks everyone. Take care. Thanks for all the good feedback.